This is Greg Fowler for Online London, and with me is Cynthia Etheridge, and she is a candidate for mayor in the city of London. Welcome. Thank you. If elected, how many hours per week do you expect that you'll spend working in your elected capacity? I believe that being mayor is a 24-7 job. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some sleep. Do you think ward councillors are currently paid enough for the amount of work that they'll do during the next term of city council? I don't, I don't want to see the uh, pay um, changed without, uh, without seeing how the workload is done because every person has a different amount of workload and possibly, uh, possibly things can be made up. So it's not like punching a clock where you, you can go in and say that you're putting in a nine to five and you may have uh, some people who highly um, exaggerate the amount of time that they spend actually working for the people's business. London's governance model is currently undergoing a significant change which includes the elimination of the Board of Control. Do you think that this will increase the necessity for ward councillors to inform themselves about issues outside of their own ward boundaries? Absolutely. I think that without the Board of Control, that the leader, being the mayor, is going to have a bigger job trying to hold everybody together to make them work as one team, again, for the benefit of the whole city, for the people. Do you live within the geographical boundaries of the electoral area in which you are contesting this election? Yes. How many of your post-teenage years have you lived in London? I'm sorry? Have you attended any standing committee meetings over the course of the last four years? Standing committee meetings. Um, I was a delegate uh, at City Hall and I've also participated in the governance task force. I've been involved in um, politics in, in one way or another, behind the scenes, not, not necessarily running for a ward seat, but I ran for a uh, school board trustee soon after I moved to London in 1999. Have you attended any board of control meetings over the last four years? No. Are you familiar with the Municipal Act and the Municipal Councillor's Guide? Uh, I have some of it with me today. So. Strengthening Neighborhoods recommended the development of a neighborhood matching fund type program for large and small community projects besides uh, celebrations or events. Do you support that recommendation? Matching funds. I haven't looked into it and I, I, I don't know exactly what they're proposing but I'm open minded and I'm willing to look at everything. Would you support development of a community program to fund the creation of public art in public places? Uh, I think art is very important to, um, to the community and I would be willing to look at that also. Should the City of London and its boards and commissions embrace the concept of making their data open and accessible to everyone as often as is possible and adopting open standards for that data? Absolutely. This is what is missing in politics is uh, transparency. When existing software applications have to be replaced or when software licenses have to be renewed, should the City adopt the use of open source software whenever that's possible? sure that's out of my realm of expertise. Is the city's communication department being given enough resources, money and personnel to properly maintain the city website and to inform citizens in a timely fashion? I've looked at the city's website and I haven't found any any problems with it or nor discovered any glitches. I imagine that the staff that they have handling that must be doing a, a good job. And I also believe that City Hall is highly overstaffed. Should citizens be able to subscribe to subject-specific RSS feeds from City Hall in order to stay informed? The public should always be able to be informed no matter which way they're able to obtain it. Should citizens be able to download the agendas of upcoming public meetings, including advisory committee meetings, at least a week in advance? That would be absolutely beautiful. I've, I've had, when I've been going door to door and talking with people, they say that is one of the things that they find most difficult is to watch uh, London City Council play on Rogers TV 
and not know what they're talking about because they're speaking about items instead of the specifics of what they're talking about. Despite the requirement of the Municipal Act that all City Hall meetings be public, except for specific reasons, it's been argued that they most often are not because of the inability of the public to hear what's being said. Do you support the adoption of a policy which mandates the use of microphones in all public meetings at City Hall? Absolutely. Do you think that the City ought to be webcasting all of its public meetings? That would be nice. Should its boards and commissions be webcasting all of their public meetings? That would be nicer. Do you think chairpersons of public meetings at City Hall ought to have to announce motions and amendments to motions and the number of votes for and against those motions so that citizens can understand what's taking place? Absolutely. Should London hire an Auditor General? I think that's wise. I not sure about the cost of it right now and in view of the difficult economic times that we're in I would like to see people being able to eat and clothe their their children but if the money is is there and available I think that would be the next wisest move. Should homeowners have to pay a percentage of the cost for the repair of damage to underground infrastructure on their own property that's being caused by city-owned trees? not sure about that one. I know that I had existing problems to pipes underneath my property and I paid the whole bill. Do you agree with the placemaking concept of neighborhood gateways? I don't know. Should there be increased user representation on the London Transit Commission? Yes. If the City of London is going to provide venture capital to businesses, should the City be guaranteed a return on its investment in the event that those businesses become profitable? I don't want to see the City losing the taxpayers' money because everything, when we speak of the City's money, it's in, it's in actuality the taxpayers' money. But I also don't want to see um, us buying um, I find that we're in a trend where we want to attract so much business that we're willing to sell our souls just to have something and not know how it will turn out. Should people be allowed to naturalize their lawns? Yes. Are London's pedestrians and pedestrian issues sufficiently represented at City Hall? I don't think so. The traffic and parking bylaw prohibits people from using any sidewalk for any purpose other than pedestrian traffic, except as specifically permitted. Should downtown patios, which consume most of the width of the public sidewalk, be permitted? I think that the downtown, the way that it is right now, needs a lot of improvement. That a patio should encroach onto the sidewalk, hindering pedestrians from passing through, is, is a crime. When closure of a public sidewalk for construction purposes takes place, what steps should be required to ensure that pedestrians are not forced out onto the roadway in a manner which puts them at risk? If there is a, if there is a section of the sidewalk that needs to be repaired and it's closed off, perhaps the, roof, the sidewalk should be closed off at either end, allowing pedestrians to cross properly at the corners where it's safer. Is the warranted sidewalk program sufficiently funded? I'm not sure. Is the warranted walkway program sufficiently funded? I am not sure about that either. Old unlit streets are not lit unless there's a local improvement program application and a cost sharing agreement amongst the local owners. Do you agree with that policy? No. Do you think special funding ought to be provided to London Police for the purchase of additional Speedwatch radar trailers and the cost of having the Auxiliary Police Section deploy them on a frequent basis? No. Should the city be spending as much as it is per year from the federal gas tax to construct on-road bike lanes in London? 
I have serious concerns about our bike lanes too. I don't think that they are always uh, safe for our cyclists. I think that the whole plan has to be to be looked at. I know I have um, five children, and I know it's against the law to ride your bicycle on the sidewalk, but I promote my younger children to ride on the sidewalk, as does a trauma surgeon that I met who says he has a lot of people come in with head injuries due to um, automobile and cycle accidents. Should bicycles be allowed on the public sidewalk? In the case of my children, and my youngest one is six, and we all have bicycles, and I wear a helmet to provide the example for my children to wear their helmets too. I permit my two youngest children to ride on the sidewalk because I would rather, I would rather pay a fine than pay for their funeral. Should persons in motorized wheelchairs and other mobility devices that are on the public sidewalk be obliged to yield for pedestrians? Yes. Should the City of London install more bike racks? Yes. Do you think theft of bikes is an important issue? Yes. Do you have any suggestions about what might be done to combat the problem? Yes. Is the City currently spending enough money to promote its web-based ride match service? I am not sure. Should there be dedicated and discounted carpool parking spaces on downtown streets and in city-owned lots? Yes. Should every signalized London intersection provide advanced left turns? Yes. Does the city currently provide sufficient funding for the community gardens program? I'm not sure what the funding is, but I do promote community gardens and uh, I. For those who do not have the land uh, or the, 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 the yards to have their own garden, but I promote all gardens in general. Should all dogs have to be muzzled when they're not on their owner's property? Not necessarily um, muzzled, but for sure um, I, I, have, I own a chihuahua and we walk him always with a leash and we keep him away from other people even though he doesn't look very menacing. Um, but there was a time when he was on our own property and there was a, a bigger dog that came along and reached over and snatched him up and that dog had a muzzle but the owner took the muzzle off just two houses before arriving to our home. So I think that muzzles are, are uh, a good idea and um, I think that people know their, their pets but they should be social res socially responsible with their with their animals. Should dogs be allowed at community events? I don't think that the dogs enjoy it. I don't think that the people around enjoy it and uh, I, I'm not I'm not one hundred percent in favor of having dogs at community events. Do you think people ought to be able to raise chickens in their backyards? <laughs> um, we live in we live in a time where it is so difficult to make ends meet. Uh, many jobs are not as well paying as they used to be, forcing both parents to go out to work. Some family homes don't have two parents. And I know, as a mother of five, I have to keep saying, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. We have difficulty with illnesses, and I think that everybody having chickens in their backyard would further complicate things. That concludes our interview. Thanks for your cooperation. <laughs> oh, gosh.